Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Petcast. I'm your host James and today we are going to be looking at the episode What Did You Say? Now before I begin, I do want to point out that as you may have noticed, uh, these episodes have been running a little longer than, you know, originally it was. So at first, I thought I would try to combat it, but now I'm just like, you know, whatever. I think I get better content this way. Well, let's see how this goes now. So, the episode begins, and it is raining outside. Roger is in the kitchen, eating cereal, because of course he is. He hears noises, but uh, doesn't know where they're coming from. So, in the shadows, Blythe comes out of her room and is making horrifying sounds. We hear a dramatic build-up play in the music, and see Blythe's shadows as she appears to be sickly and making her way to Roger. Roger sees what's happening. And then says that either the zombie apocalypse has started or dot dot dot. Blythe then comes out of the shadows and says that she's sick. Roger agrees with Blythe and says that she needs to go to bed. He then gives her some herbal cold medicine, which Blythe has a bad reaction to. Uh, Roger says he'll call the school to tell them that she's not coming in today. And at first Blythe protests, but uh, then agrees to it because she's really not feeling well. Blythe then stumbles towards the dumbwaiter to tell Mrs. T like that she's sick and can't come in today, probably. So in the pet shop, the pets are having fun. And when Blythe comes down, they meet her. And Blythe explains she's sick and asks if Mrs. Twomley is in already. The pets are making pet noises and not talking. Blythe soon realizes that she can't understand the pets anymore and gets scared by this fact. So, meanwhile... In the back alley, there's a fly flying around. And Vinny, who is there and not with Blythe, is on the hunt for it and is impatient. So it lands in the dumpster and Vinny tries to get it, but misses and lands in some trash. After getting all dirty, he says that he should just switch to frozen waffles. Penny Lynn comes out looking for Vinny. Uh, yeah, okay, now that I'm saying this, it's weird that Vinny is just out here in the first place and Penny Ling just comes out as well. Like, how can pets just go out to the back alley? It's not safe. I don't think that should be allowed, especially if you're putting them in, like, a specific area for them to be around in. It just doesn't seem terribly safe, you know? Penny Ling uh, informs Vinny of the situation... But Vinny is still distracted by his prey, who is currently befriending Penny Ling. Uh, Vinny goes for it again, but fails a second time, and then says he'll be right in. Penny Ling walks back in? It's still weird to say. And informs Russell that uh, he should be right in. Meanwhile, Blythe is trying to figure what's going on with her. Uh, She has an idea that she describes as so crazy that it'll work. So she tries to stimulate her ears to turn her powers back on. 
by doing a bunch of weird stuff to it. But it doesn't work and she gets more depressed about this. Um, the pets are worried and think they should take her to the vet. Okay, I have to admit, that's that's kind of funny. But what I'm about to talk about is a bit of a rabbit hole. So, if this episode is longer than usual, and by usual I mean usual at this point, blame this because I am shocked by what what is about to go down. So, here's the thing. Why are animals pets if they have this much autonomy? Like, why, like, are they going to take her to the vet? And how? Like, how do they come to this conclusion? It is, like, I mean, I, like, she should see a doctor or at least get some form of healing. But how do the animals know to come to this solution, of all things? Like, I mean, they go to the vet, sure, but... Like, why don't they have, like, that this isn't... Like, they broke a limb or something. This is, like, Blythe is just sick with, like, a cold. Like, don't, shouldn't animals have, like, different ways of dealing with stuff like this? Why didn't they go to that first and just immediately jump to, like, take her to a healthcare professional? Like, they... They have this idea and think they can execute it, I think. So why are they pets if they have, like, this much free will? Like, they, they, uh, like, this is, like, exhibited throughout the series. Like, like, they do stuff that normal pets, like, shouldn't do like watch tv or like well watch tv and comprehend it or just like i don't know there's um i can't think of any other examples off the top of my head but that one seems like a big one so my theory is that this is some sort of prequel to my gym partner's a monkey where animals are, like, speaking in human speak and have about as much free will. But if that's the case, like, why why are they still, like, separated and segregated? Why aren't they integrated? Like, is, is that why, like, Adam was, like, chosen? Oh, goodness. I just realized something. <laughs> uh, like, like, is Adam the beginning of, like, attempting to mix animals and humans? Like, is that, is that it? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this rabbit hole goes a lot deeper. <laughs> Because now I have, like, this. I know, like, the in-canon reason is that his last name is Lion. But maybe it wasn't just that and they just wanted someone to see if humans and animals can mix. And then, like, that becomes the whole thing of, well, the first person... To try this is named Adam. 
so it kind of fits uh to quote a different adam i never asked for this so as i was saying oh geez that took like five minutes they say that they should take her to the vet but russell says that humans don't go to the vet. Okay, that brings up more questions. Like, how do they know that humans don't go to the vet? Maybe, like, Russell just didn't see any humans going to the vet? Or maybe, like, he knows that humans don't go to the vet for some other reason? But this is still weird although i do well no that's now they they have different vets for different animals but like i mean it, it it's always struck me weird that there's just humans and vets generally like not humans and vets doctors and vets generally even though like even though i know that there's like specialists I guess so anyway so Sunil deduces or asks if instead of going to a veterinarian they go to a humanarian and the other animals just assume so and then they immediately go into a song, specifically an 80s synth pop song about Blythe needing a humanarian. It is incredibly 80s, like down to the hair, the shapes, and the colors. And like the tone of the music. And it just. It's really really 80s. So. Uh, between the girl pets and Sunil. They all ask Russell to be Blythe's humanarian. But he says that he is not a humanarian. He's an animal. And is sad that he can't fix Blythe. So then Mrs. Twombly pops in. And Blythe informs her that uh, she is sick. And then Mrs. Twombly puts on gloves and a mask. And marches Blythe upstairs. So. Outside. Vinny is still chasing the fly. But he ends up in the dumpster. And then gets picked up by the city dump. So, yeah, again, these are bad security measures. In that an animal from the Littlest Pet Shop can just be taken by a dump truck on accident. Because you can just walk out to the back alley whenever. So, at the dump, Vinny notices all the flies around. He tries catching one to eat, but to no avail. And in his last attempt, before he is stopped, uh, he hits a pile of garbage, and then a heavy load of garbage is about to fall on him. So the fly he was originally chasing, I think... Why did we come to that assumption? Uh... I mean, it is true that it is. Well, I'll finish what I'm saying here. Because I have much more of this rabbit hole to go down <laughs> after the scene. So, the fly from the pet shop organizes the other flies to save him by forming into a hand and picking him up before the trash hits him. So even flies have that much autonomy. 
that they can just they know that something is in danger and they can organize to save it like and again like how do we how are we supposed to trust that like this is like the original fly it is but how do we trust that uh it's because like it has to be because like even though there are a bunch of flies they have different and unique personalities that even though they can't talk in a way that can be heard which is common for other bugs throughout the series they still understand life somehow but because of their biology they know to live at like the dumps and stuff which is incredibly weird because they're just flies and okay I know I just like make a lot of jokes about how oh everyone's mutant in this universe this is more than just being a mutant animal you can have like a hedgehog that can lift things and bend bars and break gates but like this is like an understanding of why that's a phenomenal power that like these flies and all of these other animals have it's this ability to understand the complexities of the universe in some manner that these animals have so why are they pets if they can understand this and do stuff and express like an incredible amount of individuality it's just weird so uh shelving that again for now Vinny thanks the fly for saving him and he then says that they should get out of there but the fly leads him the other way from he was from the way he was walking so uh Vinny says that the fly is like a little GPS thing but smaller and with wings so in Blythe's room uh Blythe is dealing with the cold while trying to figure out what's going on with why she can't hear the animals um she says uh uh, I guess we weren't shelving this for long. She says, you're all different. I should be able to understand some of you. Which she probably should. Because, again, they're all different animals. Why is it, like, animal and people again? Why is that the separation? Like, somehow, like, they get it so that animals and people can share a language but it's still segregated until adam lion comes in to see if they can just coexist but this is still weird that the division still remains at person or every other animal and that's troubling to some extent because like it does not take into account the different unique species among the pets there and like even though like they're all unique 
even within themselves. Like, they're still all mammals, except for Vinny. And that's... That's just weird. So, okay, out of the rabbit hole again. Uh, Blythe notices that Vinny is missing and points it out. And the pets are like, we don't know where he is either. And then Blythe comes to the conclusion that this cold is what's making her not hear the animals. And goes to sleep to try to kick that cold to the curb. So uh, when Blythe goes to sleep, Russell is in shock to realize that uh, Vinny's not there. Uh, Penny Ling says that he was out by the quote-unquote trash box and said that uh, he said he was coming in, but he didn't, and they just kind of forgot. And then Blythe starts snoring loudly, and then Minka makes a note that Blythe needs to go to a people vet once that cold is gone to get that bear out of her throat. So then, at the dump, things are getting ominous. Vinny is on edge, and we see a figure dashing around. Vinny tries being cautious and warns the fly, but steps on a cassette player to make some music play. He turns it off after a few attempts, and then a rat comes up and asks if uh, he's from around here or not. The And when Vinny says he's not from around here, two other rats show up, after Rat 1 says that they are, in fact, tourists. Rat 3 thought that they were from here or that they weren't tourists. But in his defense, he says his allergies are acting up and can't smell. Rat 1 says that this is a good thing around here because they're in a dump. So then uh, he guesses uh, that Vinny was just chasing the fly when he got swept up in the dumpster. Rat 1 says that this happens all the time, and that last week, an animal with a long, pointy nose came around, but he can't remember the animals, or what the animal was called. Rat 2 says it was an elf, but Rat 1 is like, no, no, it's not an elf. And then he thinks about it, and he says it was like, a thing that eats ants and then remembers that it was an anteater. Um, he says her name was Sally and that she was nice and a good singer and that they were sad to see her go. At this point, the three rats crowd around Vinny and he is cowering down. And Vinny uh, thinks that they ate her and they're going to eat him. Oh my god! But Rat1 says that that's not what happened to Sally. And that's not what's going to happen to him. And then uh, also begins to lead him out of the dump into home. So at the pet shop, the pets are playing cards. You know, normal pet things. And are worried about Blythe and figure out what to do. Uh, Penny Ling mentions that she usually feels better after eating bamboo. Sunil mentions that he feels alive after fighting snakes and suggests that they release a king cobra into her room. Which, which is like <laughs> funny but also wildly inappropriate and like a thing to do. So inappropriate that Pepper rejects the idea and says that Blythe should just express herself through her scent glands like she does. So he then says that she should put on a collar and throw on a fashion show where people are looking at her. Russell says that those ideas won't work and figures that they just need to wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it. Okay, so jumping back into the rabbit hole a bit, 
so now they are just suggesting stuff that works for them, which like makes sense for them to do because they're animals and they figure what works for them should also work for Blythe. So like, is it because they're just dumb? Because we've already established animals are stupid multiple times. So is it just like, from there to somehow becoming advanced enough to learn human stuff effectively and put it to use, kind of, in My Gym Partner is a Monkey, to then integrating? It's, it's a weird thing to think about. But that's what I'm here for, to actually think about this show. Yeah, that's... I did not think I would ever be here when I decided to start this podcast. But now I am realizing that part of this podcast is to think about the show, which is something I don't think I've ever really done. So... Uh, the pets then bring up the other problem of not knowing where Vinny is. So at the dump, uh, the rat, the original rat, and Vinny are making small talk about where Vinny is from. Vinny says he's from the Lotus Pet Shop, and the rat says that the Lotus Pet Shop is really good, and they take really good care of the pets that are there. And he also likes Sweet Delights, but just because of the dumpster, you know? So the rat shows Vinny the exit, and Vinny is delighted. So the rat then says that these streets are a bit dangerous, so they need to keep moving. So Vinny does some dance moves to keep moving, but the rat informs him to move forward to you know, get where they're going, which makes sense to Vinny. So they charge the streets of downtown city. Vinny almost gets hit by a truck, but is saved by the rat. And then they have to outmaneuver a falcon, so they slide under a mailbox and then into a yard. They meet up with a bunch of vicious guard dogs. Uh, To be fair, they are trespassing, so maybe they're just defending their home. They're not like, like really angry, abused to the point of like they're just that hostile. They're just getting a trespasser on their property, which makes sense. So then in Blythe's room, Blythe rings a bell to get Roger's attention And then she asks for more medicine. Roger goes to get it, but then she rings her bell again for orange juice. And then again for some chicken soup. So then after the chicken soup order, Roger waits and Blythe is like, what? And Roger says, nothing, just waiting for the bell. And Blythe gets a laugh out of that. And then Roger says that that's a sign that she's getting better. And that uh, he hates seeing Blythe feel so miserable. And then he leaves to get the medicine, orange juice, and chicken soup. Blythe notes that the cold isn't the only thing that makes her feel miserable as she looks onto a picture with her and the pets. So, okay, to delve down into a different rabbit hole for a second is this part of her dealing with her situation like like i know i know like she can talk to animals and that would be like cool in whatever context but because she's like 
doesn't have a mom that we know of. Well, okay, she has a mom, but she's not present. And her dad has, like, a demanding job that we've seen so far. So he's, like, not there as much as, like, a dad should be. But that's just because, like, he, he needs to work hard and this is his job. And he didn't know, presumably, that his wife would disappear or die or whatever happened to her. And even though Blythe has, like, human friends, they're not always available and they have their own problems. So is, like, her, like, talking to pets and understanding them seem like a godsend to her because, like, she doesn't have to feel lonely all the time like like she spent her like days in the previous city that she lived in or the suburb that she lived in just outside sketching to herself and then she came to downtown city like miserable until she realized she could talk to pets so like is it like that like she can talk to pets like another way of dealing with her loneliness in no way cuz like she has someone to talk to and convey emotions to and they can convey emotions back and holy crap we're connecting rabbit holes now so like, what I'm thinking is that, like, she she's, like, doubly depressed about not being able to talk to animals anymore because she's reminded of, like, where she was before she could do that. That was, like, a lonely and sad place for Blythe. And so, like, she doesn't want to go back there. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So, in the pet shop, Russell's trying to figure out where Vinny is by asking Penny Lang what happened and then having Sunil be on alley duty, but, uh, Vinny isn't there and there's no sign of him, and then he just wonders aloud. So... Vinny and the rat, whose name is Pete, now that is revealed in this scene, and the fly have appeared to make it out of the dogs and are on the streets again, avoiding people. Vinny then gets hit with some water from a popped hydrant, and Pete saves him. They then get uh, hit with some bird seed, and some birds go to eat it while also pecking at Vinny and Pete. So, back down the original rabbit hole of this episode, it appears that, like, some animals have autonomy and not all of them. Because these birds just, like, they seem, like, dumb as doorknobs and like not not in the way that Vinny is like they don't even talk they just like eat the food that like this old lady provides them and like don't seem to notice that other animals are caught up in it like what what determines which animals have like the level of autonomy that like flies and rats and geckos have but like blue jays just don't seem to have this whole thing is just weird so they make it out and are in front of the littlest pet shop however a little girl comes by and picks Vinny up and takes him home thinking he's a baby alligator and her mom is just like, sure, whatever. I don't care. 
The little girl whose name is Alice said that uh, this is nice, but Pete says that there are names that he could call it, but nice isn't one of them. We go to Alice's room, which is covered in a bunch of dolls, like that hotel room in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but slightly less creepy. You know, it's still a bit creepy, but it's not like, unordinarily creepy this is just like a little excessive creepy so Vinny is in a goldfish bowl that where the top is covered by a book and he is wearing a dress that has been put on him which may or may not have been foreshadowed in mean isn't your color and reflects on his current situation he says he should have just come in when Penny Ling said so, but he didn't. He had to chase that fly. Now he's here and is now named Princess Precious, based on the novel Pushed by Sapphire. So at that point, Alice walks in, and this time, uh, this time around, this time watching this episode, I notice that she has braces. Which is weird, because, like, I don't think she's any more than seven. How and why does this, like, seven or f six or five-year-old have braces already? Like, I mean, what extreme dental stuff happened to her where she needs braces at, like, seven? Wait, don't tell me. She was a victim of Night Brace. Dun, dun, dun. I d okay, so I, I'm kind of glad this came up, actually, because last time I mentioned Blythe going on Operation Cupcake. And now I'm wondering if, uh, if maybe this takes place in the same universe as Kids Next Door as well. Where, like, Blythe was a former operative. And, oh, I just realized something. Blythe was a former operative. And even though she had her memory erased, she she still retains, um, uh, 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 like, some sleeper knowledge. And that that's what she did before talking to animals. She just saved the world from ki like, for kids. And but she outgrew the kids next door, so she had to forget. So now, now with with her mom not there, her dad barely there, but being good when he is there, and other stuff. That talking to animals just like is the next big step that she doesn't need to be lonely for. This is something. And then the Alice, being a victim of Night Brace, suggests she's either with or not, or like, maybe she's not with the kids next door. Or maybe she is. Like, I don't know, num number three was kind of like excessive and party happy, but she was still a fairly competent agent. So maybe like, She's an agent or an agent in training. And then Night Brace got to her. This straight to the top. Uh, okay. So uh, she comes in and tells Vinny that uh, her, I think, yeah, Alice refers to Vinny as a her because... She doesn't know better. Says that her baby doll was crying, so Vinny has to hold her and kiss her and tell her you love her. So she's very demanding and yells a lot and is very forceful to the point where Vinny is actually kind of scared and goes along with it. So she then demands that Vinny feed the doll and gives him a... Uh, 
a bottle to do so. But when Vinny tries, Alice is like, no, you have to feed the doll right. So uh, she demonstrates by feeding Vinny. And then uh, Alice picks up Vinny and asks him if, uh, like, Vinny loves her. And Vinny burps after all of the milk he just drank, which he has hurricane burps. Why not unleash one and get out? Although I am just now realizing, like, if he was chasing the fly and then, uh, like, had to get back to the thing, he wouldn't have anything in his stomach aside from the milk just then so he's hungry still and like probably can't muster up the strength for a hurricane burp so huh I guess that is consistent I thought that was an inconsistency with mutant powers but it's consistent so, um, uh, Alice takes the burp as a sign of love and then goes out to change for the party that she's having with her dolls and Vinny. Vinny knows that this is kind of messed up. So, uh, then the fly pops down on a string and Vinny wonders what's up, but then Pete is on the other end of the string up top and says to grab on to it. Vinny does so, and Pete pulls him up, but is a bit slow at it because Vinny is about one and a half times his size. So, I I originally wrote that the show was inconsistent with mutant powers, but it's consistent with mutant powers, but what it's not consistent with is actual animal abilities. Like, why can't Vinny just wall crawl? He can he can do that. It's been shown in episodes that he can just attach himself to walls and like climb. So why didn't he do that there? It's it's strange that like they're inconsistent on that front. So Alice comes back now wearing a similar dress to what Vinny's wearing. And has some party food, which is just mac and cheese, which a mac and cheese party actually sounds really good. I, I I shouldn't have a lot, but I'd be down for going to a mac and cheese party, you know? But uh, she can't find Vinny and is looking around. Vinny is above her and sweats onto her, which is when she looks up to see the escape attempt. Uh, so, it's at this point I noticed that they're on a ceiling fan. So, the rat is on a ceiling fan, and Vinny is trying to climb up to it. Alice calls out Vinny and Pete for being naughty, and then turns on the fan to, like, punish them and make sure that they don't escape. But, uh... It doesn't go in her favor as as they slip and fall out of the window um, there. So I guess that's why she's an agent in training. But like for a seven-year-old, that's a bit impressive. Like she is like drilling down on a detainee to get what she wants out of them. Like, she knows how to, like, field an escape attempt by doing something kind of, like, messed up to make sure they stay there. But, like, they left the window open, so, like, they flew out anyway. So, you know... Like, needs improvement, but is showing good progress so far. You know, she'll make a great kid's next door, probably. 
So Alice then cries at the loss of Princess Precious, based on the novel Pushed by Sapphire. Uh, Vinny, the fly, and Pete are on a string, and they're tied to the pole. Pete then says, all in favor of never doing that again, say I. To which uh, Vinny and Pete say I, and the fly just buzzes, which I assume is just I. So Blythe is feeling a bit better, and Roger comes in to see that that's the case. Blythe says she's not at 100% yet, but, you know, better. Roger says that she should take more of the medicine, but Blythe objects, saying that it tastes like old socks. Roger looks at the label and says, Old socks aren't listed as an ingredient, like they would say if it was, or, you know, that it would be. So then, um... He then notes that the medicine has a bunch of weird side effects. They are as follows. May uh, impair ability to juggle, knit sweaters, properly polish silver, rebuild a car engine, wax surfboards, ride a unicycle, and here's the kicker, understand pets. Blythe is shocked, but I did call this the first time I watched the episode. Uh, I think it was at the bell scene. It might have been right away, but I can't remember for certain if it was that. I definitely knew by the bell scene. So then uh, back down a different rabbit hole. Uh, Like this medicine is like labeling it that they can't understand pets so this is like a thing that some people can already do enough to where like it needs to be printed on medicine and like so are we like further than i thought we were to the point where we get to my gym partner's a monkey than I thought we were if like many people can already understand animals maybe just silently like I knew the reason why but I was still confused when I was put on the label so another thing is how is everything else tested along with this I mean, I'm sure this was probably a bit easy to test because, like, someone who was more open about being able to understand animals took it and just couldn't. But how do they just, like, things like... I mean, juggling seems easy to test, so is knitting sweaters. But how do they test rebuilding a car engine? And especially how did they test properly polished silver? Because, like... Do they just not properly polish silver then? So it still ends up polished, but not properly? So this whole thing is just confusing. So Blythe is still surprised. And Roger's like, I know, nobody rides a unicycle. Uh, Roger says then that after looking at the label, he's going to say no to this. And da 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 say no to this, and just uh, and just uh, give her lots of fluids to help her heal the rest of the way. Uh, Blaith is ecstatic about this and says, "You have no idea how happy I am." Roger says, "I thought I did, but I guess I underestimated." So then, uh, Blaith, feeling more better, comes down and explains that it's the medicine and is like say something and then Vinny walks in after an exhausting day and says he's relieved to be back everyone goes and greets him and then Pepper wonders what's with the dress Vinny says that from now on you shall call me Princess Precious based on the novel pushed by Sapphire so the rest of the pets decline and says that it was worth a shot. 
So he really doesn't seem to have a problem with the name or the dress. It's just that Alice is such a good Kiss Next Door agent and so overbearing that he's just afraid. And that's an important skill to have in the kids next door. If like your enemies can be afraid of you when you're seven, that's impressive. So um, Blaith says that she missed Vinny and missed talking with everyone. And Vinny is shocked by all of this and wondering, what did they miss? Oh, what did they miss? And then everyone just laughs. And then uh, in the alley, Pete and the Flyer reflect on the good they've done by returning Vinny back here and then decide to hit up the Sweet Delights dumpster to live a little. And that's where the episode ends. So when I started this podcast, I thought, oh, I would just like have a bunch of goofy fun, like pointing and laughing. But now I'm really getting into the minutia of the series as a whole. And like now it just seems that like, all of the questions surrounding the show are just catching up to me at this point. I wonder if I'll have like questions for next time. Like, I don't know, is like Blythe like somehow, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what questions I would have next time, but uh, I guess that's part of the fun of this podcast. This is really an exploratory podcast. And, like, that's part of the fun. So, like, this episode itself was, like, fun, even though, like, I am now questioning a lot of it. So... But it was still fun and it's still a good episode. And it even had like good Roger moments. I love me some good Roger moments. What can I say? So that about does it for this episode of Littlest Pet Cast. Be sure to leave your thoughts and comments on the Shout Engine page. On the uh, Apple Podcast page on the Google Play Store, and wherever else RSS feeds go if they aren't being intimidated by Kids Next Door trainees. See you next time for the episode Bakers and Fakers. Until then, goodbye. Okay, let's see if we can't figure this out. So, Littlest Pet Shop takes place in the same universe as the Marvel Universe and the Phineas and Ferb Universe and also the Kids Next Door Universe and is a prequel to My Gym Partner's A Monkey. So, that's all established so far. But between... Uh, like, My Gym Partner's a Monkey and Codename Kids Next Door. Like, Codename Kids Next Door goes into, like, Billy and Mandy and Ed and Eddie and everything else there. And, like, just in general, it seems that, like, a lot of Cartoon Network cartoons, like, maybe not share a universe, but, like, share an interdimensional pocket dimension thing where they're all where they're all sort of connected so there's 
all of that contained within itself, but then that would mean that due to like the Powerpuff Girls, uh, they also live in like the DC universe because like DC heroes are mentioned often in um, in Powerpuff Girls and like in like the old commercials, they're uh, like they show up. So the DC universe, which then goes into the whole weird realm of the DC universe, which then through Batman connects to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which then goes into Turtles Forever, which is like way too big of a spreading point that I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to pedal back for a bit and go back to like Dexter's Lab where they have like Hanna-Barbera cartoons as well. So it takes place in the whole Hanna-Barbera universe. So maybe this is just like a reset universe like in like uh, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. And like that makes sense somehow because of the whole animal talking thing, I think. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. So, like, it's all weirdly connected somehow. So, yeah, this has been Grand Unified Theory Corner for another piece of the Grand Unified Theory. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs>